Badger and the Badger. Hey everybody, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and it's time for another build. Today we're gonna be taking a look at Nautilus as a top laner. He's actually a champion I've always really, really liked, but never played like a ton of. I think the main reason is if you're gonna be playing Nautilus top, he does do plenty of damage. There's definitely no argument there as a as, as a tank. But the problem is you aren't really a carry. And the meta right now fits that because there are plenty of tanky top laners and really Nautilus has such a good peel and engage kit. He could be played, well, almost all the time if you really wanted to. But I, I, I can't, I don't have a carry potential most of the time on him. You can win your lane and that really is helpful but you can't necessarily just win a game because your Nautilus got super fed. That doesn't necessarily happen because um, he's just not like a super hard carry. But I do really like him as a champion. We're going to go over a little bit of everything today in his build. Um, we're going to talk about runes and masteries in just a second. We're going to go over his abilities and, of course, items and what you might want to build on him. Um, so let's kick things off, though, with those runes and masteries. Pull those up for you right now. Take a look. Pause the video if you need to. Take a closer look at them. All right. And let's get rid of those now because I want to put a pink ward out, which is smart. And Lulu, who was going to go back because she was backing, she warded and she's going to get rid of my pink ward immediately. And that sucks. But she was about to back and she's at half-life and I want to kill her. So I will proceed with the killing, which Nautilus has a lot of damage. And because of that, he can actually kill people. And he is decent at tanking damage from turrets. So we're going to go under and get that kill. We'll take three turret shots and yeah, that tickles for sure. Um, without any real items, but it's definitely possible to solo people. Luckily, it's a Lulu. This is kind of a farm lane with a little bit of back and forth um, poking, but nobody's got like all in crazy potential right away. Um, so nothing too crazy to worry about, but she can poke me a little bit. I just have to engage on her if I really want to damage her down. But let's talk about Nautilus's abilities quick and get those out of the way. So to kick things off, at level one, typically put a point into your Titan's Wrath. This is your W ability. You're gonna surround yourself with a shield that will block damage for up to 10 seconds. Now, it also scales off of your maximum health, which is awesome. Um, while the shield is around, your basic attacks apply damage over time effect to all units around. Um, and the effects will deal damage, magic damage over the two seconds, it scales with ability power. Yada, yada, yada. Basically, it lets you absorb damage because you have a shield and lets you deal more damage too, which is a really good thing. It's good at level one in case you can get poked because let's face it, Nautilus is probably going to get poked while he's in lane. We're going to be maxing that out typically second. At level two, we put a point into Riptide. I also put a point into this at level three as well and skip my Q, but we'll get to that in a second. Riptide, now Riptide is what you're going to max out first. This causes that Riptide that goes around you that's going to slow enemies and deal physical damage to them. Um, it's really good for clearing out minion waves, which is something that is good when people are trying to push waves against you. Um, another really good thing, too, is when you do close the gap on them and stun them, um, they're going to be taking Riptide damage, and it does significant damage, even with the small nerf it just received. It's still quite good. You can see me chunk down Lulu pretty effectively in Riptide, 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 make her ult to save her life, and so on. So max out your Riptide first because it's on a short cooldown, too and it doesn't really cost too much mana, to be honest. At level four, then, I typically put a point into my dredge line. This is his Q. This is what pulls people. Um, it's going to do physical, or not physical. It's going to do uh, magic damage to them, scales from ability power. If it hits terrain, though, you can drag yourself to the terrain, and the cooldown will be reduced by 50%. So remember that. It's a good escape tool. I'm not sure I really use it in this game. Um, but you can use it as an escape tool as well as an engage tool. So remember that. Max that out last the cooldown does get much better as you max it out, so if you wanted to put more points into it early, you could get better uh, cooldown on it, but no worries from there. You really use it as um, that last initiation tool. And then finally, you have your ultimate, which is, of course, the depth charge. This is when you file that, fire that shock wave that causes, um, or it will chase enemies, really. Um, it will knock them up, and it will deal magic damage, obviously scaling from ability power as well. Um, when it explodes, like I said, it does a, a, a good amount of damage, and then it will launch them into the air, and it will stun them from either one to two seconds, depending on how many points you have in the ability. And that's your depth charge. It's good um, as a starting initiation if you need to. It's good as a chasing tool. It's good as a peeling tool. It works really in a number of different ways, because you don't have to commit to the depth charge um, with the knockup, like Vi does with her ultimate. She goes in regardless. Um, she can kind of peel with it off of people, but if she's trying to peel for herself, she can't really do that. It doesn't work too well. Um, but not unless you can knock it up, knock up somebody and run away, and that can help. So that is, of course, your ultimate. So as the game goes on in the early stages, 
Really important, obviously, to farm well. Like I said, Nihilus does a good job with this to help with farming and damage when we're on top of people, which is something we do when we fight. But the only way I can trade with Lulu is to be on her face, which luckily, with so much engage and so much um, stickiness with you know your pseudo peel on your Riptide and your stun on your auto attacks because you're passive, um, you can really stay on top of people. So because of that, we're going to go with a Sunfire Cape early on-ish. Um, if this was a physical damage matchup, we'd be the, we'd rush the Sunfire Cape completely, but we'll just pick up the Bami Cinder first, and then I obviously need to get a little bit of magic resist to absorb some of the poke I was getting. LeBlanc's going to roam up to top because I haven't been getting the jungler up here too much. I mean, he came up a couple times, but uh, this is a pretty easy lane to get kills. If you got a Nautilus on your team in the solo lane, man, go gank his lane. He has so many engagement tools, it would be pretty hard to not get a kill. So uh, gank for your Nautilus. He's going to be tanky. He's definitely going to be getting on top of the target's faces. And uh, he pushes lanes pretty quick once he gets a few points in that Riptide, too. Um, and as you can see, I can get that wave to crash into the turret before I back. So they start to lose out on more um, gold and experience. Always make sure you have that wave pushing hard into the turret. Or if it's pushing back into you, that's okay. So you don't miss out on the wave being in a bad spot when you get back up to the lane. You need to make sure you keep your lane management under control and in your benefit most of the time. So um, so we needed to build a little bit of magic resist, so obviously we picked up that, um, that cowl, and we're going to be building that into a spirit visage, which is what we finished off first because we were in a magic damage priority you know, lane. Also, their Orianna in mid lane um, has been doing quite good, to be completely honest. She's got a bit of an odd build, but um, people will be weird, but that's what D1 people think they can do. Anyways, um, that is what's happening in that lane. But, that was a terrible ward, um, but hey, look who it is, and she's going to heal herself. I hate this. This sucks. I hate when you death charge and they heal and they get away. But, this is just going to show you a little bit of how tanky I am with barely any armor at the moment, um, because we now are starting to build towards our Sunfire Cape. Um, not like they're focusing me like crazy, but you can brawl for a while in fights, and it's pretty fun. Anyways, we're building the Sunfire Cape now because of the lane matchup, and the other thing, too, is... We have gone with Boots of Swiftness. They're just a little bit better on Nautilus. It really just helps out his engagement and his stickiness that he has to be able to stay on top of targets, which is important like in a fight like that because, you know, as, as Ezreal's jumping around and as Vi's sliding around, it's nice to be able to have a little bit more movement speed when you need to get over to them and get your, uh, your passive stun off on your auto attack. You need to make sure you have your Staggering Blow good to go and get that up, okay? Good. I'm glad we I'm glad we went over that together. Um, so yeah, we go with uh, swiftness boots, and like I said, we're doing that sunfire cape. Now next, we're gonna be needing a little bit more armor because armor is really important, and we're gonna actually buff up our stickiness again. If you can tell, we have we have a little bit of armor. We have a little bit of mana. We're gonna be building that towards a glacial shroud, and the glacial shroud will in fact team up with a sheen, which is awesome for my basic attacks and just for fighting and for everything and for fun. Um, brings a little bit more damage too, and it brings together the Iceborne Gauntlet, which will really increase my stickiness in fights and be really annoying, honestly, for them. And that just makes me a menace. I hate that when you flash and the auto attack follows through and gets you killed. Man, that sucks. Um, or else I would have lived if that auto attack wouldn't have been in the air. But that happens. You will die. Well, it will happen. But four one and one Nautilus is. I mean, that's that's nothing to. It's nothing to. Shake your head at. That's uh, that's a scary Nautilus for the most part. Um, anyways, so yes, we will be purchasing an Iceborne Gauntlet as our next item. Increasing the armor, which we'll need against the very strong ADC meta. Also, they have a Vi. Vi does significant damage, so it's always good to have a little bit of armor. They have, uh, what are their threats in theory? They have technically 2 AP, 2 AD, and, uh, well, uh, their jungler, or no, their support is 80, I guess, too. To a certain degree. But uh, we're going to die. I can solo Ezreal if he doesn't have Vi show up, but totally, totally, totally can uh, solo Ezreal. That's yeah, one thing you'll be really surprised about with Nautilus. He can actually solo just about anyone because he has so much tank ability. Unless you're going up against maybe a Fiora with a crazy amount of true damage because she's broken, but she did just get nerfed, thank God. Um, we're going to go back in for a fight after a bad push by our team mid and a good push by them top lane, but... This is organization versus not. Luckily, as our team's trying to back, they actually will pick up some kills. So this will get turned around a little bit. And LeBlanc's going to come back up and clean up Ezreal. 
after uh, Graves get back. So we get really lucky here that we save the inhib and that our team actually picks up those kills that we're trying to stop their backs. So we do get the ace. I die for it, which is completely fine. Nautilus should be dying in fights. You shouldn't live through everything, unless you're crushing their team so bad that they're dying in aces. But for the most part, if anybody's going to die on the team, it needs to be the Nautilus who's tanking and engaging and getting deep into the team's back line to do that. Um, so yes, it's okay that I died. I really don't care about dying. It's a team game. It's... Screw stats, honestly. It does not matter. It's unfortunate when we don't coordinate things very well, but that does happen. Um, we're looking for an engagement. Vi comes back in, misses, luckily. Hit her with the stun. Gonna be doing plenty of damage to her with the rest of the team there. I'm gonna la uh, hook the Lulu from max range. Get her stuck in place. Gonna use my alt, but man, she disappears to that chain from Le Blanc, which is um, it's actually Miss Sarah Fortune who is apparently going to be going to a challenger team soon. So congrats to him, although he changed his name again, which he does all the time, and he messages me, and I don't know who it is, which is always confusing. And then I figure it out. Anyways, um, yeah, but th that is what Nautilus is going to do. We're going to be working on our next item, which I believe is a ZZ. Now, ZZ did just get nerfed, but we need to talk about ZZ just in general as an item. ZZ is still fine with the nerfs. It's still quite strong, but people keep using ZZ as a offensive item. Well, I mean, it gives you defensive stats, no arguments there, and it's really good with the passive that speeds you up by turrets. I mean, that's amazing. That is fantastic. That alone makes it still worth it. That is really good in fights. You used to get so freaking fast by dead turrets and just turret structures. Look how fast I move around. You can see that little swooshiness. Holy cow, it's awesome. Anyways. People need to remember that ZZ will always push regardless. That's how it works. So yes, you use it offensively if you want to get the lanes to push, but that puts ZZ in a position where the enemy team can go and kill it, and then it doesn't push for you. You can also use it as a defensive item so a lane never gets pushed into you past a certain point, because they will stop the minions, and basically they'll eventually beat that wave down enough to then push it back. So you can always use it defensively, and when you do so, you're preventing one lane from getting pushed, unless they're obviously pushing that lane with a champion, but minions won't ever be able to really push that lane and take turrets and objectives, which can sometimes be a problem when chaotic fights are happening around the map. The other thing you can do too with it is, if you do put it somewhere in your jungle to help with a defensive push, per se, or to help stop a wave from pushing as kind of like a lockout, you can always use it as bait. Enemy players will always look for a ZZ to kill. They hate it. Everybody hates that item. Everybody hates what it does. They will look to kill it. It's the same way you can use pink wards sometimes to bait people. Put it in a place, see them taking it, or see that they're going for it, and then go and kill them. So yes, that's why we bought a ZZ. The rest of the build is in the description. I hope you all try him out because he's fantastic. And I wish you all the very best of luck on the Fields of Justice.